Captain Clegg and the Ship's Cat by Nicola Baxter In the middle of the night, in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of his cabin on board the Maisie May, Captain Clegg lay awake. It wasn't the creaking of the timbers below that stopped him from sleeping, and it wasn't the flapping of the sails above. What was keeping the sleepless captain awake was a little scritch-scratching noise just by his left ear. Captain Clegg rolled over and shut his eyes tightly, but he could still hear the noise. This time it seemed to be coming from just behind his right ear. That's enough, yelled Captain Clegg. Ow! He sat up suddenly and banged his head on a beam. He knew that he had to do something about the giant mice on board his ship. Now you and I know that the animals running around sailing ships and making scritch-scratching noises are probably rats. But Captain Clegg didn't like the idea of rats aboard the Maisie May. It made him happier, although not much, to think of them as giant mice. It wasn't just the scritch-scratching noise that bothered him. His breakfast cookie was often nibbled around the edges. And the ship's pantries were being eaten up, too. As soon as we get to port, said the captain, I'm going to buy the biggest, fattest cat I can find. That'll show him. Sure enough, the moment Maisie May reached land, Captain Clegg left his ship and set out to find a cat. The captain didn't know much about choosing cats, but he had one idea firmly fixed in his mind. To deal with giant mice, he decided, you need a giant cat. At last, he came to a market where a thin man was selling lemons. Beside him, an enormously fat cat was sleeping in the sun. Lemons! Sharp and juicy! sang the man. But the captain interrupted him. Never mind the lemons, he said. I'll give you forty dollars for your cat. Done, said the thin man without a moment's hesitation. Captain Clegg picked up the enormously fat cat tucked him under his arm, and staggered back to the ship. That night, the Maisie May sailed out onto the ocean once again. Captain Clegg prepared himself for another noisy night. After all, there was sure to be a bit of squeaking and scrambling while the new ship's cat set to work getting rid of the giant mice. But the new cat simply... slept. Well, not simply. She snored as well, pretty loudly... Between the scritch-scratching noise in his left ear and the cat snoring in his right ear, Captain Clegg did not have a happy night. He reassured himself that the cat needed time to settle in. In the morning, he would see some action. What he saw the next morning was a severely seasick cat. All day long, the cat was either being sick or lay sleeping in her bed. So Captain Clegg had a very unhappy day followed by another night filled with scritch-scratching noises. When the sun came up the next morning, however, the captain was delighted to see his new cat was bright-eyed and prowling around the cabin. "'Looking for giant mice, are you?' asked the captain. After a day and a night of feeling seasick, the ship's cat was now looking for some breakfast, and mice were not what she had in mind. Captain Clegg watched in dismay, as the cat gobbled up his entire ration of breakfast cookies, as well as lots of the ship's pantry. Over the next few weeks, Captain Clegg became more and more miserable. Not only did the cat eat all of the captain's meals, but she insisted on sleeping in the middle of his bunk, too. And she didn't catch a single mouse. At night, lying on the deck wrapped in an old ship's flag, the captain was too uncomfortable to sleep. He began to think that any amount of scritch-scratching noise was better than no bed and no breakfast. That cat would have to go. One week later, the Maisie May docked in a small port. The captain lost no time taking his cat on shore and selling her, although he had lost a lot of money on the deal. And the cat made her feelings known by digging her very sharp claws into Captain Clegg's arm. That night, Captain Clegg settled down in his bunk once more. In the morning, he felt extraordinarily peaceful. Not only had he slept well, but the ship was strangely quiet. Yes, there was creaking from the timbers below. 
Yes, there was yelling from the sailors above, but there was not even the tiniest scrit scratching noise. Can you guess why? The ship's mice were so upset at having no breakfast biscuits to eat, in fact, no rations of any food at all, that they had all jumped ashore at the last port. Captain Clegg's sleep was undisturbed at last.